This is insane. Hey, what's going on guys? Uh, just here at the Simplot Sports Complex to test out the DJI Quad. Um, it's it's a complex that's just full of like soccer fields and stuff. Um, so it's a good place to test your RF because you can go like, the, I mean the park is like a half a mile across anyway. I bring all my quads here and, and test them on 25 milliwatt. I figure if they can go 25 milliwatt or go a quarter of a mile on 25 milliwatt, um, then the RF is good. If your quad can't go a quarter of a mile on 25 milliwatt, um, then you've got some kind of an issue. So there's a quad air unit. I'm running SMA connectors so I can run an Axi and a Pagoda. Um, I just found that getting the antennas off the quad just made for much better signal and kind of reconfigured my um, Helipack to fit the DJI goggles. I know you guys have seen these. But anyway, um, I just kind of posted a public group invite if people want to come check out the system. So we're just going to fly it. I'm going to see how far I can get on 25 milliwatts. And I'm going to kind of follow up with my thoughts afterward. And just a, a disclaimer, because somebody's already asked me this on Facebook, if DJI sent me the kit for free, and so they're asking if I was biased. And while that's very flattering, I'm pretty sure DJI has no idea who I am. So yeah, I did pay for the system. Um, and I'll explain why I think part of that is the fact that it's not my drone. I'm gonna go out in the light and vlog a little. So, David's flying it right now. Um, I started with just the Pico patch, then I put the crosshair on, and then I put the pepper box on. Um, this is all in 25 milliwatt. Um, obviously the pepper box is gonna be the best. And from here, if you look behind me, I'm flying a little over a quarter mile away on 25. Um, and I was still at 25 megabits, uh, but my signal bars were getting red. And I noticed maybe a little inside of a quarter mile when I start flying behind um, this pair of trees, I was getting some stuttering, which, you know, if you're flying analog, that would be breakup. Right, so I was curious. I haven't tried 700 milliwatt yet, so I brought it back, cranked it up to 700, and I was able to put like three rows of trees in between me and the quad at a quarter mile, um, and there's no stuttering. I mean, obviously the focus mode was kicking in and the sides were getting blocky, but I mean, there was like no latency, there was no stuttering, I was, I was, I was pretty impressed. Um, so, you know, in terms of like range and penetration and what you can do um, so far, I'm, I'm pretty impressed that it's like holding its own. Um, it's not gonna be as good as analog just because analog is not pushing nearly as much data through the object. But for basically a GoPro-like feed in the goggles, it's not an airplane, we're not close to the airport, pay no attention. Um, for basically for a GoPro-like feed, what the system can do at a quarter mile and 25 milliwatt is, it's just, it's, I'm, I'm impressed and I'm relieved that it doesn't suck. I'll just, I'll just say that. All right guys, so <clears throat> just wrapped up flying. I uh, had about three other guys come out um, and we were like just kind of chasing each other and our buddy Eric had a bunch of planes, we were chasing his planes, that was pretty fun. Um, but anyway, uh, so yeah, I tested out the DJI HD system and like I said on 25 milliwatt it was, uh, it was doing okay out to a quarter of a mile and then I pumped it up to 700 
um, and there was just there was no issues. I mean, yeah, the the focus mode was kicking in, and I was getting some blockiness, but I mean, there's there's nothing in analog FPV that compares to it. But anyway, let's. So, like I said in the beginning, I I bought. I paid for it. So I bought the goggles, I bought one air unit with a camera, and it was like $720. And if you follow me at all, if you know me, you know I tend to stick to cheaper goggles. Like, so I've been running the commanders. I started on Fat Sharks, had the Fat Shark V2s, then we went to the Fat Shark V3s because I like 16 by 9. Uh, and then we switched to the commanders because the commanders have a larger field of view than the Dominator V3s. Um, and you know, for me, $300 for an analog goggle system, it was about all I was willing to pay because when you start getting into the four or $500 range, and then, you know, you're talking another hundred, 150 bucks for a module to me, there's no value in that because I don't think so. For example, if you like take the HDO, in my opinion, the HDO is not worth twice as much as the Aomi Commanders. There's just no way. I mean, yeah, they're OLED, and yeah, you get rapid fire, which is whatever, but they're not, I don't, to me, they're not worth $600. That's crazy to me. That's crazy that people will spend that kind of money on analog goggles. So when DJI announced their system, I was like, okay, the goggles are 520. That could be worth it, you know? And I, I was just like devouring YouTube reviews um, and watching DVR footage. And it's like you, don't, like, you don't really wrap your head around the fact that the DVR footage is really that good. So anyway, fast forward to like two or three weeks ago and um, another local guy, Davey, ordered the system and he brought it over to my house and uh, we got to put in a quad and just after I tried it after seeing just powering on the goggles without even having a video feed just seeing how big the field of view was and how clear it is because it's 54 degrees and it's literally it doesn't even matter how you put the goggles on if you put them on wrong it's still going to be clear edge to edge it like it does not matter like like DJI they did not screw around with the optics um and just just having the goggle makes it worth it it's just like it's like the most beautiful display that you're ever going to put on your face well for now but then when you talk about the footage the footage is literally like GoPro footage. Maybe like, you know, going back a few years, like the Session 4, because the Session 4 was like, um, I don't know, like 30 megabits as far as the bit rate. I mean, it's about that level of quality that you're seeing when you're flying. And with this massive crystal clear field of view, it's like, until you try it, you're not really gonna comprehend it because you're used, you know, we're used to flying analog goggles with garbage video, with low resolution video where you can't make out fine details, um, where you're getting static, and, and yeah, like that includes all current existing goggles on the market. I mean, like your mind cannot comprehend what it's like to fly with HD GoPro-like footage. I mean, like if you, I mean, you know, there's a lot of detractors, a lot of haters, that automatically think the system's gonna suck because they're thinking back to like Connex or whatever. If if you if you don't want to spend the money, or if you just like say bought HDOs within the last year and that's a big investment for you, if like if you don't like don't just don't try it. Don't like I'm telling you if like if you try it, if you put the goggles on and just even see the image from the camera, I mean, you're just gonna lose your mind. Now, okay, so there's a few caveats to that. And, you know, there's a few cons to the system. Um, a big one for racers is it's like, currently it doesn't work with the timing system. Something about how 
the goggles and the air unit, they both transmit and receive and, and like that screws with lifetime or something. So this is kind of where my head's at. Yeah, I still race. Um, and I, you know, I still practice. I, I, I just, you know, I have my race quads, but this system is so good that I'm willing to not race. Um, and you know, I don't have anything riding on that. I'm like, I'm not a full sponsored professional pilot anymore. Um, so that's take that for what it's worth. But if I never fly analog again, I'm okay with that. Like, I mean, I flew my commanders today. I flew Eric's HDOs and it's just, and the, you know, this is no offense to like my friends. Cause I have a bunch of friends that fly HDOs. David flies commanders. Um, I have a bunch of friends that fly commanders. I mean, going back to analog goggles is horrible. It's, it's horrible. It's like, you know, and we use the analogy a lot. It's like going from a 4k 65 inch TV to a 32 inch tube TV watching VHS tapes. I mean, it is so bad going back to analog. The, the field of view is tiny. The video looks horrible. I mean, it's just, it's, it's bad. It's bad. So like after, and I tried Davy's system twice. And after the second time I flew it a little bit more, we flew it at the race, like last weekend or two weekends ago, two weekends ago. But I mean, I was like slowly coming to the conclusion that I was like, yeah, I'm going to, I'll just quit flying analog. I'll quit racing. Um, because the experience of flying with the DJI system is so rewarding. It's so immersive. It's so fun that I will take the downsides, like not working with the timing system. Um, one of the other things I don't like about it is the, the, the lipo lead thing where you like you put the lipo in your pocket i know a lot of people do that now i never like i like having my goggle or my battery on my goggles so maybe it'll, someone will come out with like an aftermarket strap to where you can like carry a normal battery because i hate having that cord like when you unplug the goggles you have to like take the battery out of your pocket and set it down on the table it's it's annoying to me but i mean there is um, another con is there is some light leak because TJI designed the foam for somebody with like a really big face so there's light leak on the sides for like almost everybody but the the like again the image is so big so bright so clear that you don't even notice the light leak you start flying and it just kind of disappears like um I mean so yeah for me it like for me like I you know I have a family I have a wife uh, single income I don't have a lot of money so for me everything comes down to the value like I don't have a problem spending the money but like it has to the value has to be there for me to spend the money and so when the HDOs came out I was just kind of like no way in hell am I spending five hundred dollars on analog goggles that's just that's insane um, but this DJI system the value is definitely there like it's cheaper than the HDOs. They could have, they could have priced the goggles at six hundred dollars, and I still would have bought it. Um, I mean, they they can leave the price where it is, <laughs> obviously, but I mean the value is there because it's it's ten times better than any existing setup on the market. It 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 just blows everything out of the water. Um, so if you you know if you want to just ex like you know if you if you're like me and you started fpv just for like the thrill of first person view while flying through the air in the immersion and um this that's why i bought the goggles that's why i bought the dji system you know it's like the first few times i've flown it because i just got this like this week and my buddy david he met me at a park because we both live close to the same park um and it was it was literally like it like took my breath away even though i've used it before it like took my breath away while i was flying it i was getting like jitters and just like beside myself and it's just like if you if you like your money or if you have like five to six hundred dollar goggles already don't don't try it don't try it because it's just gonna ruin everything it's gonna ruin it for you um and you know, and it's like, there's a lot of controversy around that because a lot of people just bought their HDOs 
and the HDOs are really expensive with rapid fire. Um, so like, that's kind that's kind of a hard pill to swallow. Um, and you know, and, 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 and another side to this is people are like, well, it's a first gen product and I'm gonna wait for the V2 and I'm gonna wait for the improvements. But guys, this is DJI. Like, so if you think back to when they released the Mavic, I mean, it just like, it pretty much destroyed the entire drone market. I mean, they already kind of had a stranglehold on the drone market anyway, but I mean, did, like they don't like screw around with products. And if you really think about it and someone kind of broke this down, but this FPV system is like a fourth generation because you've got OcuSync, you've got Lightbridge, you've got all this other crap where they've been, you know, perfecting HD streaming, right? And so now they've just like, over so many years and so many iterations, they've got it small and they've got it low latency. So this is not a, like a first gen product. This is not, this is not like something new. Like this is, DJI has been working on this for a long time and it's like, it's really, really good. Um, I mean, I don't know what else I can say. It's like, if you like your money or if you just got really expensive goggles, don't try it because it's, it's gonna ruin everything. Um, and that's, that's pretty much all I have to say about that. All right, guys. Um, thanks for watching. I've got a three day weekend. It's my first holiday and my first paid holiday in like, I don't know, like six years. So I'm probably going to fly that quad every day this weekend. It's just like, I mean, I'll probably fly it again tonight. Um, it's just, it, it's just, it's a blast. It's a blast. It's a blast to like experience true immersion. Yeah. All right. Thanks for watching, guys.